Hi, I'm Danny Zegger, uh, Zegger Easy Play Guitar. Uh, up bright and early this morning. Uh, I uh, changed strings on this thing yesterday. They were uh, getting a little grubby. Uh, fresh set of strings is like a shower in the morning. Everything's nice and clean and clear. Uh, a lot of people don't realize when uh, your strings have been used a lot, uh, they get out of balance, like a tire on your car that wears crooked. At 60, 70 miles an hour, the car starts to shake a little bit. That's because the balance is not right. Um, with a string, uh, the string is no longer balanced when it's dirty. And when you strike it, a clean string will fan out and it'll come right in and it'll die. A dirty string is going to fan out, but as it fans out, it's going to wobble. Now you say, well, you know, that's probably microscopic. You can't even tell. Well, you can't tell by looking at it, but you can sure tell by listening to it. Let me, let me give you a little demonstration of what, basically, to begin with, what happens is the string is out of balance, so it wobbles and it causes a waver in pitch. And we'll see if you can hear this or not. Now I'm hitting two strings. These two strings are pretty well in tune. They don't wobble. But let's say I'm going to bend one note. And when I bend it, it goes a little sharp. Now, listen to the pitch. Well, if I can hit it there. See, it's a real fast wobble. Now, if I push it down straight, there's no wobble there. It's just smooth and clear. But the thing that carries through, let's say, one thing leads to another, as it always does. Uh, you're out of tune. The strings wobble. You can't get a good tune, so they don't move together. When they don't move together, very basically, it slows the vibration. And when you slow the vibration, it's not as loud. So bottom line, a dirty string isn't as loud, it isn't as crisp, it isn't as clean. Well, these are the things that you get turned on to or turned off to, whatever. If you're in a really good tune, uh, it's, it's really a turn on and uh, your chords ring clearly, the resonance is longer. Uh, these are all uh, very minute things, supposedly. But in the long run, with everything that takes place, one thing leading to another, um, equal and opposite reactions taking place. Uh, uh, Einstein's theory of relativity, or whatever they called it, um, it's really true on a guitar. So, in other words, that tune, uh, or lack thereof, really makes a difference on your performance. So the first thing that I always do, I picked up my guitar this morning, I found out the clean strings. Wow. I listened to the pitch, each one. Now, last night, I got ambitious and I uh, changed the strings and got a really good edge on the tune. So this morning, here it is. And uh, the, the best thing is uh, they had a chance to set overnight to any settling that takes place. Uh, remember, I've maybe taken you, you've maybe seen previous videos before where I stretch and bend the string. The idea there is we get any of the variation out of the string so it doesn't give later on. And uh, uh, so it stretches out as far as it will stretch and then it settles down. That's one thing that a lot of people, a lot of times, uh, talk when, when they pick up a guitar, they, it stays in tune so well. Mine uh, never, they never stretched and bent their strings. They never kept the strings clean so they could hear the pitch clearly. Uh, you, you say, well, boy, you really are picky. 
Damn right. If you're going to be a good musician, just any old thing doesn't work anymore. A good cook is going to make a difference in the kitchen. Everything tastes just so. It's got that edge on it. They call a cook an artist, too, you know. So, uh, just giving you examples here. Okay, uh, I've got a list of tunes. Uh, these, these tunes I haven't uh, recorded before uh, in this setting. Uh, and uh, I wanted to uh, play a couple things for you. I'm not warmed up, so bear with me. Um, these, uh, these are classics, most of them. Uh, again, I'm working on another thing where I just find new tunes and put them together. You'll find me, if you keep listening to the videos, uh, that uh, I'm gradually going to introduce new material. I'm getting back on the stick. Most of these uh, songs that I'm playing now have been put together, what, 20 years ago already. And, um, but they stood the test of time. They are classics. Uh, this one is called uh, On Both Sides Now.
like to hit some harmonics here. Now again, this is very typical of playing early in the morning. The brain just doesn't move very well. You noticed a couple places in there that I had to smooth out as best I could. If I was really warmed up, I'd be much more relaxed playing. Everything falls into place. Uh, very old song, but it's a good example of, uh, of my system, my guitar playing system, language as I call it. Uh, uh, I throw in a couple things, different things. Uh, I'll explain them as I go. Um, continuing on other pieces. Um, let me see what else I've got. Uh, back in the classics. I didn't say classical, I said a classic. Um, an old Beatle tune. Okay, oh my love. This is in a syncopated mode. One, two, three, four, one, two. Instead of one, two, three, four, one. I can play it. But it sounds better in the syncopated mode. the one. I don't even remember who that artist was. Uh, way back.
I stopped in the middle of the tune. I didn't. That's, that's actually the way that was performed originally. Um, just different ideas, keeping the color coming as much as possible. Uh, I'm relaxing a little bit, but I'm still tense. I suppose that comes a little bit just to not being awake. Um, naturally, as an artist, you always try to do the best. Uh, you, uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, tighten up a little bit before a performance. I suppose that's normal. Um, let's see what else I've got on my list here. Um, okay. Um, you know what I've got. Okay, I don't know who the artist is that wrote this. Uh, only the heart may know. Continue in with the classics here. I did that many, many years ago, and uh, you uh, fall in love with certain pieces. Uh, again, uh, my fingers still aren't going here yet, as you can tell. Uh, see what else I got here. Um, here, there, and everywhere. And 
Yeah. Fun and games. It's a Beatle tune. Um, it's got a lot of chords to it. I'm not going to guarantee much on this because I haven't done it in a long time and there's a ton of chords in it. See? is in there too you notice too when we get into uh, four and five ret reaches uh, that's when the capo comes in handy again if I'm capoed up higher the frets are closer together and uh, so maybe instead of uh, I might mark on my book here instead of playing this uh, with a capo up on the second fret I might you know run it up together now sometimes you want that sound a higher pitch and sometimes it sounds better in the lower register again a lot of times we don't use the capo at all it's uh, as I said a tool not a crutch and uh, um, you say well how do you really use it as a tool I mean as a crutch uh, the crutch would be uh, maybe uh, I want to maybe it's too low for me and I chose a key that's too low for my vocal range. I don't want it here, I want it up here. All I have to do is move the capo up. Now that's using it basically as a crutch, but you could argue, is that a tool or a crutch? Well, everybody calls it different. sharp as we would call it. Um, 
So I tug on it just a little bit. A little bit better. I bet you remember that. In the year 2525 started out like It's kind of a flutter, I call it. Uh, I use the curvature of the pick. And instead of like that, I turn it to the side and just slide over the edge. Just kind of, um, we wanted a sound, I remember, we wanted a sound that gave the setting a little suspense and uh, the minor chord was part of it. But that I added just a little bit. So that's the way we started it out. <clears throat> okay, let me uh, let me go here if I see if I've got anything else. Uh, I don't know what. I'll give you an idea of what we can do with different pieces to change rhythms. Um, let's use an old piece. It's another Beatles. Beatles have been one of my favorites through the years. They, they always put more color in the chords, more. The average song back then had about three chords, three or four chords. The Beatles tune would have six or eight or ten different chords in it. And uh, more color, it was a harder, harder road to play, of course. And you have to know, you, I had to know the sequence and, the, and which formation. You can do many formations of a different I mean, of one particular chord, you can do many different formations of it. And um, so that situation comes in with a, like a Beatle tune that has so many chords. Um, this is called Scarborough Fair. And I'm, I'm going to demonstrate something here with different rhythms. Um, <laughs> myself up. I memorized this in a different key and I, as I showed you this capo, I put it in the wrong key for this particular tune. So I'm going to go back down to the second. change like that, I always double check my tune. Uh, because uh, in the process you can stretch a string or something, and when you stretch a string it's stretching it probably sharp too high. And then when I go in, change it, I hear the... It's this one that's just a little sharp. And I always test it out with some regular chords that I play. Does that G sound right? Does the C sound right? And as you become a better guitarist, you know exactly how those chords should blend. When they don't sound right, you listen in and say, okay, which note doesn't sound right? And you narrow in and say, well, that one string is just a little sharp. Well, most people would go and say, well, that's the second string. And up here would be the tune gear. And then they'd tune it down. But as you notice, I'm in a whole different realm of tuning. A lot of times, I only change a string by stretching it just a little bit like that. That sounds better to me. You probably say, didn't sound any different to me. <laughs> sure sounded different to me. It sounds better, better blend now. Okay, back to where I was, uh, Scarborough Fair.
classical mode. It's not an even rhythm. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm speeding up and slowing down and going every which way. Uh, a classical mood like this is fun to play because it doesn't put as many demands on this left hand. The minute you put an even rhythm into it, then you have to be there right on time and link it in. Um, but what I was going to demonstrate uh, for you on this particular piece, uh, being a complete arrangement, naturally, all the parts come off of one brain. So instead of uh, the conductor up out in front of the 30 pieces, uh, everything comes together in your head. And uh, uh, I'm playing a lead line, chord structure, bass rhythm all at once. And I've explained this many times before, and you're probably... Some of you are probably sick of that direction, but but that's that's the way this whole thing works. So in this situation now, I'm going to uh, play the same song, only 